the stories, as I like to call them, the crazy X stories or crazy mech stories, so you, if, if you will. <laughs> um, well, let's see. Uh, many, many people have come and gone, um, and this was inspired by, um, you know, the first episode where people were cracking up at the um, porn watching ex that you know. I walk, I come home, and she's watching what appears to be, a, you know, I mean, there's one thing watching golden showers, like somebody peeing on someone, but to have your ex or, you know, your girlfriend at the time be watching porn on the bed, like a guy stuffing a girl's head inside a toilet bowl that is clearly soaked in urine while he does her from behind up the ass, of course. It's it's a little bit of a turn on, but also slightly disturbing. Um, Now, mind you, the filming of said porn... Uh, clip was not very well done. I mean, you could tell that was Gatorade and an actual urine in the toilet bowl. Um, I did promise not to say anything while we were dating, but I guess that's that deal's gone out the window. Um, I guess I was faking it. Uh, ha, ha, ha. No written contract signed there. Um, and um, to keep it rolling with that ex, um, again, Helen um, would watch weird porn videos um again this is the first time and this was one of her good qualities the first time a girlfriend has watched more porn than myself now i watch porn not once a day but you know i mean every so often and i have my go-to porn stars like uh, there's like a list of porn stars i like to watch on rotation and you know uh, check out if they have any new videos sometimes they get older and you have to substitute them out with um up and coming stars uh but that's just uh, the nature of the of the beast i guess um it also depends on the mood like if i'm in a relationship i barely watch any porn i mean why would you want to watch porn when you have somebody there you can just have sex with um now, in her case, no, she just always, I mean, they kiss, um, even at a young age, from what she told me, she liked to always masturbate, and one time masturbated while driving to my place. I find that kind of weird how somebody can do that while driving, kind of a hazardous, hazardous situation, um, but that was not one of the few times that, um, you know, her driving caused issues. Uh, another fun story of my recent ex. Um, well, like I said, we met interpreting and she needed to be rescued. She was on her way to a 430 home visit on the west side. And she needed to be rescued because she decided she wanted Kane's chicken instead of putting gas in her car. Apparently, the gas light on her car had been turned on for quite a bit of time. But, you know, even though the Canes on the west side on Broad Street was right next to a gas station, oh no, heaven forbid we put gas in the car before actually getting food. And I had to take time off work, go get her, take her to her home visit. And at this point, we, um, nobody at work, because you're not supposed to be technically dating interpreters, it's frowned upon. Not against the rules, but it's frowned upon. Technically, um, you, uh, nobody knew, and um, I had to go take her to her home visit, and then take her back to her car, put gas in her car, uh, and then uh, drive back home. It was, you know, hilarious at the time, but at the same time, how stupid you have to be to allow that to happen. Um, but that's uh, recent ones. Let's see. Um, old school. Let's go old school with this. Uh, as many of you know, my first serious relationship was a girl named Jenny from Milwaukee. Uh, she's into Mexicans go figure Um, and the two main stories I remember from that time is the tampon story now lord almighty I am I'm not a big fan of OB of of OBGYN and I hate going to labor and deliveries for interpreting and this I think is was a turning point in that in that regards Um, now at the time I was living with my roommate Cato big uh, good friend. Again, Cato gets a shout out like almost every freaking um, podcast. It's kind of an annoying habit. Um, but anyway, shout out to Cato Boyd. 
um, listening probably, uh, laughing his ass off. Um, yeah, so we're living together and, um, first thing I do almost every morning is go to the bathroom and she was living to, well, she wasn't living with us, but she pretty much squatted there rent free every time. And she was in the bedroom. We were sleeping. I got up. I went to go pee. Um, Kato was already up. And so I go to the bathroom and I pee and flush it and the bathroom it's one of those clog clogging of the toilet where you know it's clogged because it's not flushing but you don't see any poop residue or anything like that so you know it's clogged but you don't know how sort of um so i went back outside asked kato hey uh did you use the bathroom I was like, nope I said, well it's clogged like, well it wasn't me i'm like well i did well clearly not me i literally just woke up so i'm like Jenny did not wake up before me. So I'm like, this is kind of weird. I mean, it's clock from last night. That's she get up. Somebody get up in the middle of the night that I get up in the middle of the night and not realize. Like, seriously, like what's going on here? So tried to use a plunger um, and then flush it a few more times and hold it down. And uh, one of the times it finally like just snapped and a floating. I thought it was a turd at the time, but a floating would appear to be plastic piece of just, I thought shit, but it turned out to be bloody, a bloody mess of a tampon shoots up from the toilet. And I'm talking about like geyser type shooting up, not just a splash to the surface kind of thing. No, it shoots up, almost hits me in the face. And I panic and I'm like screaming. I'm like, ah, what the fuck is this? Um, turns out dumbass Jenny did not know that um, the tampon she bought, they came in like a plastic capsule type device thingy where you take out the tampon, stick it up your u and then you throw away the plastic covering. Well, when she took out her tampon, I guess she just threw the whole thing with the plastic part. Instead of throwing it in the trash, tried flushing it down the toilet. And I guess it wasn't completely in there. The plastic part was kind of like horizontally in the pipe and creating some kind of like um, leveraged uh, situation where every time I would flush it, the cotton part would go back out. And I guess it just caused a sling slingshot effect and almost hit me in the face. To which I instantly woke her up, asked her what the hell she did to the bathroom. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I didn't do anything. I didn't clog it. Really? Then how come a piece of tampon almost hit me in the face? Clearly, that kind of bullshit... Blew okay, girls, as a future reference. Girls, if you're dating someone and you're not at the point... Because you'll get to the point where it'll be okay to, you know, watch each other pee. Even though I'm not a big fan of that bullshit. Like, I usually avoid that because i eat at a restaurant i do not need to know what goes on behind closed fucking doors so for future references tampons and bleeding shit if it doesn't flush down the toilet the garbage yeah trash mainly the one where you put all the kitchen food like the rotten shit yeah all that in there don't need to see put that in the bathroom trash where everybody can see do you see me putting my poop tissues in the bathroom trash? No. Clearly, if I had a pet and the dog pooped on the carpet, I would either flush that down the toilet or put it in the actual trash and toss that outside. Seriously, same deal. The other story I remember from back, back then, and mind you, this is about 10, 11 years ago, 2005 maybe, 2004. Um, I mean, maybe one time we can have Kato on the podcast and Get his view on this uh, of the timeline situation. Um, the other one was the Cato peeing on Jenny story. Now I know it sounds worse than it was, but uh, I think Cato had gone out to get some forties or some uh, something like that, and we were. Um, I I was trying to watch some TV. Cato had passed out on the Lazy Boy with forties in his hand, and I think I was doing something in the kitchen and. I see Kato trying to stumble around and Jenny is passed out on the other couch. Uh, he gets up and I see him try to sort of make his way towards the bathroom, but he's not coming down the hallway. And the kitchen had like a bar area where you could see into the living room. So you got to kind of visualize this um, situation here. Um, he gets up on the lazy boy and instead of going towards the bathroom, he turns around and starts walking towards the couch. 
And I'm like, what is he doing? And I'm at this point, I'm like, well, nothing's really going on. Um, should I stop this? Should I say anything? Like, what? I'm kind of like, let let this roll. Like, see what I can see what I can uh, muster and uh, kind of satisfaction I can get out of this. Um, hey, aside, I know what you. Hey, I know. Hey, I know what you're thinking. I am an excellent boyfriend. You can check my boyfriend resume out. Uh, out. It is available for everybody online. Just all you need to know is ask, and I will send you a copy. But yeah, I you know it's, it's one of those things where like it's a double take. What is going on? And then you just go go kind of go with the flow. He unsips his pants, and I'm like, oh my god, he's going to pee on her. And Kato at this point had a bladder issue and uh, had ruined certain things uh, with his urine. He, had, he basically pissed on beds and couches. Um, but this one, you know, it kind of looked like he was going to give her a golden shower. But then I see, and, I, and at this point, I'm frozen. I, I can't move. I want to stop it, but at the same time, I'm like frozen stiff, not knowing what to do. So he starts peeing, and I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Nothing. Like, she doesn't wake up. No no noise, no sound. Like, what, what's going on? And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, is he, is she that out cold? I can't remember if we were out partying or not or what the situation was. But I, I remember it was very weird that he was just peeing and peeing and she wasn't waking up. Until I realized what was really going on. Motherfucker was peeing on my East Pack book bag. Not on the actual couch. And the book bag was literally on the right side of the couch, on the floor. And he peed all over that bad boy to the point where... I, at that point, oh, now I'm pissed. I'm like, oh, sh- Kato, what the fuck? Jenny gets up and I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? And we take Kato to the bathroom. I don't know, like he finishes the pee or whatever. And I'm just like, my book bag, you've got to be kidding me. So Kato cleaned out the next day. I went to class with my books in my hand. And Jenny was kind of upset at me because I didn't try to stop the issue, which I sort of explained it's just one of those things where you do a double take and you just can't. You just got to go with the flow. Ah, uh, but yeah. So uh, let's see what else uh, we got. We got quite a bit of um, material to go through. Um, well, I mean, exes, yeah. But I mean, just girls I went out with or they like, casually dated or even stalkers. Uh, let's see uh, if anybody knows me for a bit of time. And now... I should do a parenthesis here, like a sidebar. Um, the reason it's called the Mexi Matter or Mexi Mind Matters, Mexi is a nickname. Now, no, it's not a racist slur. Um, when I was in college, one of my doormates, Joe, uh, Dirty Joe, gave me the nickname the Mexican. He was watching Brad Pitt and, and Julia and Julia Roberts um, uh, in the movie, and said, "Hey, I'll just start calling you the Mexican. Does that offend you? No, no, no big deal. Thinking it was going to stick." There was multiple Alex's on the floor, so he kept calling me the Mexican. Everybody started doing it. Next thing you know, the Mexican was too long. Cut it down to Mex- Mexican, then cut that down to Mexi or Mex. So basically, whatever variation of the nickname you use, that's how I, how, how much I know or, or how I know how long you've known me. So, um, yeah. So uh, And because of that, um, it's more of a nickname that friends and fans would go followers or anybody would, would call me uh, I remember in college there was people that knew me by that nickname and I had no idea who they were uh, from parties I would just throw so I never allowed my significant others or people I've, I was seeing to call me like uh, by that so um, but uh, one of the stories was the Carissa situation from 2009 um playing soccer she was on my um indoor soccer team um and i usually don't like to you know break the platinum rule which is basically um kind of you don't you don't eat where you shit you basically you never ever ever go out with somebody you see on a regular basis barbers hairstylists uh colleagues co-workers uh teammates now i've i mean this rule i violated many times so um Sometimes I don't even follow my own rules. And this was one of those situations. Uh, Carissa was on the team. She was good. Uh, I didn't want to lose her as a teammate. But at the same time, she kind of had the hots for me. Um, And I mm, never really wanted to go out with her. 
Uh, but Drunk Mex, and if you ever get a chance to see Drunk Mex in his full glory days, oh man, that is a sight to see. Drinks on Mex, Drunk Mex, hoo-hoo. You do not want to dare him. 